Last night, uh, for the very first time, certainly not the last time though, uh, me and my wife and Carter, we ended up going to Lamar Jackson's new restaurant that he got, uh, play action, soul food, and more. Uh, if y'all ever down in South Florida, you have to, you gotta go there. Trust me, you gotta go there. Like, this belly is not here for no reason. I got plenty of experience with food. Uh, but anyway, while we were there, I got the sweet and tangy wings with fries. It was fire. Carter got his chicken tenders with fries. He loved it. My wife got smothered turkey wings uh, with rice, with mac and cheese, with collard greens, and with cornbread. Hers was excellent as well. Uh, we also got a strawberry cake and banana pudding. Um, so, y'all, make sure you go there and check it out. Usually, when I go to a new restaurant that I've never been to before, I usually try to consume like two or three meals, and I'm pretty successful at doing it. Again, I said this belly got plenty of experience. And the reason I do that is because I just don't know when the next time I'm going to be back. But last night, I only got one meal. Um, and I did consume it, and it was great. Uh, but then, as you know what we all do, we go on Instagram, we post the food that we ate, especially if it was good, especially if it's from a new place, we post it on our stories and whatnot, and I did that last night, and, and shout out to Lamar Jackson for the repost, um, but I was scrolling on Instagram this morning, and, and I saw something that I just couldn't digest, and it was a report, well, not, not even a report, just a sort of suggestion for, from an article from Bleach Report Gridiron, and I was just like, nah, I, I cannot consume that at all. Because now, um, it is the time of year where they start to throw out a lot of different trade scenarios. And one of the headlines was Saquon Barkley to the Chiefs. And I'm like, man, it seems like Bleach Report and a lot of these places, they try to trade Saquon Barkley like every year. Remember last year? Well, or was it this year when they were suggesting that the Ravens should trade for Saquon Barkley? Um, but anyway, so I was scrolling through a couple of the different players that they were suggesting that teams should trade for. And then I stumbled upon one and I was like, oh, I almost threw up. I almost did. Because it said the Colts should trade for Marcus Peters. And I was like, yuck. It would be excellent for the Colts. It would be phenomenal for the Colts. But for the Ravens, I'm, like, I, I'm not even going to allow Ravens to think of this. If, if, they, if the thought even crossed their minds, I would be up there quick, fast, and in a hurry to just shut it all down. But anyway, let, let's look and see the why, because we got a couple of different trade scenarios that they suggested that involved the Ravens, four of them as a matter of fact. And we're going to go through each of the four. Now, the first one that we just talked about, the Colts would be getting Marcus Peters. And guess what they would give up? Guess what they would give up for Marcus Peters? A, 2020, a third round pick, a 2023 third round pick. Pfft. What? Mar for Marcus? Pfft. Yeah, you silly for that. But anyway, let, let, let's read the why. Uh, it's unlikely we'd see two AFC playoff contenders make a swap involving an impact starter, but the Colts should try regardless. Ravens star cornerback Marcus Peters is coming off a torn ACL and is in the final year of his contract. Baltimore, which only has six million cap space, could open 10 mil to roll over to 2023 if it dealt Marcus Peters. The 29-year-old Peters was one of the most dangerous turnover threats in the NFL until his injury. He has 31 interceptions and 86 pass breakups in seven seasons and has become a much more trustworthy option in coverage compared to his first two years in the league. Baltimore recently signed veteran Kyle Fuller as depth to go with 2022 fourth round pick Jalen Amore Davis and Eamon Marshall. Don't forget about Pepe now. Like, come on. Now. And, and really, y'all, like, it's no offense to him. It's no offense to him. But they really included Eamon Marshall in this article? And he has barely even seen the fit. Like, come on. They're like, that's how I know. Like, and it's, it's no, I, I understand. You cover all 32 NFL teams, so you can't deep dive into every single NFL team. I get that. But maybe, and I know Grid, BR, Gridiron, Bleach Report, I know they got the personnel to do it. Maybe they should allocate somebody to like each division who could take a deep dive into the four teams, or they just take 32 people and have them each dedicated to a team to really deep dive into it. But anyway, anyway, um, it wouldn't be shocking if Peters was, was made available. So this is what they said. Based off of this, Baltimore recently signed veteran cornerback Kyle Fuller as depth to go with 2022 fourth round pick Jalen Amore Davis and Eamon Marshall. It wouldn't be shocking if Peters was made available. Oh, yes, it certainly would. It certainly would. Now, Kyle Fuller, we know that that's a nice depth piece for the Ravens. That is not the Ravens starter. He's not the starter. He could start, but no, let's, 
Don't don't try to mess with our cornerbacks. Anyway, uh, he said Indianapolis would be a natural landing spot as it goes all in around Matt Ryan. The current array of options across from Stephon Gilmore is a gamble. As Brandon uh, Fakeson hasn't even put together for a season of consistent play yet, Peters would raise the ceiling of that unit considerably in 2022. He would. He certainly would. Oh, oh, he would make them that much better like that. Instantly, immediately, right away. Right away. No, no, no doubt in anybody's mind. But it's a no. No. I, mm -mm, no. I'm not letting it happen. Not, not, not Marcus Peters. No. I, mm, I can't let that one slide. But anyway, I, um, I was going up and down the article and stuff. And I was like, oh, they suggested. They, they, they went through all 32 teams. So I was like, okay, that's what they suggested for the uh, Indianapolis Colts as a trade option. But what do they suggest for the Baltimore Ravens to do? Somebody for them to acquire. Scotty Miller from the Bucks, Wide receiver Scotty Miller. Um, and in that trade, um, let, let's just read the, the actual trade. Um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, they were seemingly equipped to handle losing two star receivers in 2021 and still push for a Super Bowl run. Uh, on top of Chris Godwin's torn ACL in Week 15, the Bucks also watched Antonio Brown walk off the field mid-game in Week 17. And yeah, we all remember that. Uh, the Bucks plugged in the combination of Tyler Johnson, uh, Cyril Grayson, and Brashad Perryman. Yo, uh, and almost got past the eventual Super Bowl champion, Los Angeles Rams. Godwin is back, but still recovering from his injury, so the Bucks wisely added Russell Gage from Atlanta. Uh, the forgotten man amongst the group is fourth-year receiver Scotty Miller. Miller spent seven weeks on injury reserve due to a, toe, a turf toe injury, but only played sparingly in nine games and was a healthy scratch in Week 14. Miller's lack of impact was shocking considering the success he found with Tom Brady in their first year together. The speedy 5'9", 174-pounder. Average 15.2 yards per catch in total 501 yards and three scores in 2020. He stuck behind the deepest receiving corps in the league, but would catch on in Baltimore with his agility. I mean, his ability to get open quickly. Baltimore opted against adding another quality receiver despite moving Marquise Brown during the NFL draft, uh, creating a massive hole that Miller could fill for a much cheaper price. Scotty Miller's cool. I don't think Scotty Miller could do some things with the Ravens. But um, I just don't feel like he would move the needle. If they got him, uh, okay, cool. Um, but I just don't feel like he would really push them over the top like that. And he would be another smaller frame receiver. We got enough of those, in my opinion. In my opinion, we, we got enough like smaller receivers. Um, and the Ravens, from all the undrafted free agents that they signed... It seems like they're trying to go in a different direction when it comes to uh, wide receivers. So with that trade, it'd be like, um, uh, I'm, I'm leaning more towards, no, I wouldn't be mad if they did it, but I wouldn't feel like it would push them over the top. The receiver I'm looking for, I want somebody to push them over the top. But anyway, we, we could talk about that later. Next trade scenario, Dallas Cowboys. And who would they receive from the Baltimore Ravens? Good old Chuck Clark. The Cowboys will get Chuck Clark. The Ravens will get a 2023 fourth round pick. Now, that would actually be pretty good uh, for Chuck Clark, uh, for the Ravens to actually receive a fourth round pick. Now, me, I would prefer that Chuck Clark stayed because the more the merrier. And again, quality depth, quality depth, man. Um, you, you don't again, if you learned anything from last year, you can never have enough quality depth. And to have a starter in Chuck Clark, a starter in Marcus Williams, and then a potential starter with Kyle Hamilton, it just, yeah, I, I would have rather them keep Chuck Clark. But anyway, uh, one of the cleanest potential trades exists between two conference contenders. The Baltimore Ravens invested heavily into the safety position this offseason, signing free agent Marcus Williams to a $70 million deal and drafting Kyle Hamilton in the first round. Ravens defensive coordinator Mike McDonald even acknowledged there's not a clear role for Chuck Clark after those moves. Uh, Clark is set to receive a new contract after this season and would surely rather be in a situation where he can build value and cash in. Dallas has the perfect openings uh, next to free safety Malik Hooker and versatile defender uh, Jerome. J. Ron Curse. He, he actually used to play for the Ravens for that a little bit. It was real quick. Um, and he said the Cowboys saw both uh, Keanu Neal and DeMonte Kazee depart in free agency and Clark would, could help fill the box safety role. They split in 2021. 
So, so far, so good. I appreciate how they broke this down. They, they must be Cowboys fans, the person who wrote this part of the article, uh, because he was very detailed with it, and he even mentioned Chuck Clark being one of those, uh, those safeties that works in the box. I appreciated that. Because he could have went out and been like, oh, yeah, Chuck Clark, he'd be rolling in the field. And I would have been like, hold up now. Do you, do you know Chuck Clark? But I, I, so I appreciated that. Anyway, he said, Clark and Curse offer well-rounded skill sets that give defensive coordinator Dan Quinn more flexibility when moving each around. Both can cover tight ends in the slot, attack the line of scrimmage, and functionally play two high shells. Uh, Hooker would be relied upon more to play the ball and produce turnovers. See, I appreciate that because Chuck Clark is not a turnover machine or anything like that. Uh, but he's a solid guy that, yeah, they will play a lot in the box. So I appreciated that. Um, so this would be a scenario where I, I think it would actually be a good scenario. Um, more so for the Dallas Cowboys than the Ravens. Um, because like I said, I, I would rather, much rather them keep Chuck Clark just for quality depth um, than to trade him away. Um, and then, like, because I know they still got Geno Stone. You got Tony Jefferson. You got, uh, who else? You got... You got um, Ardarius Washington, you got Brandon Stevens, so you, you do got a lot of other options, so it wouldn't be the end-all, be if they traded Chuck Clark, it wouldn't be like, oh man, yeah, we're done, but to have all of that, and still have Chuck Clark, and still have all of that too, it would make me that much more comfortable as the season went on, so, but th this trade scenario, that one wasn't so bad, now, here goes another one, now this one would be like, oh, ah, that, that is my reaction to this one, so, New York Giants, they would receive Nick Boyle and a 2023 six-round pick. So they would get two things. But hold up. What would the Ravens receive? Wide receiver, Kenny Galladay. And that is such a tricky one. We know with the Giants, it was a big yikes last year. Didn't score a touchdown. And he was hurt a lot, too. Uh, that price tag is through the roof. Um, so, And I know Ravens, they looked at him last year. They didn't make an off anything like that, but they just checked in. Um, and I remember uh, with, with the Lions, the issue wasn't his play. The issue was the injuries. The, injury, the issue was could he play? When would he be available to play? Because he missed... A lot of time with the Lions. He missed a lot of time with the Giants. So if he came to the Ravens, guess what he would probably miss? Guess, no, go ahead, guess. Guess what he would probably miss? Exactly. A lot of time. We have experience with this with Sammy Watkins. If, a, if, a, if somebody tells you, if somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Believe them. Believe them. And my thing I ain't got no problem with a receiver on a high price salary. I got zero problem with that because what I believe, you get what you pay for. And if you want quality, you got to pay for quality. I get that. But I would just be scared that if, if he, can, he would come with a high price tag, no problem with that. But that'd be a high price tag coupled with the injury history. That would be what would scare me. That part would scare me. That part would frighten me. So I would have to say no to this one. But let's read their reason why. Um, the New York Giants are the only team not considered a playoff contender among the five teams with the least cap space available. <laughs> Hey, sorry, that, that was funny. Stuck with several large contracts until next offseason, the Giants should be concerned with dumping long-term money as acquiring new talent. Since the Giants can't afford a major acquisition that fits their timeline, the best they can do is trade Kenny Galladay. Galladay failed to click with quarterback Daniel Jones in 2021 after signing as a free agent from Detroit. Maybe his hip injury from 2020 lingered into 2021, but a lack of chemistry and consistency were concerning. He produced just 521 yards on 37 receptions. Finding a new home for Galladay is complicated, by the fact that his new team would need to pay his $13 million base salary in 2022. Baltimore would need to reshuffle some money to make this work, uh, but it has a need for a playmaking receiver after dealing Marquise Brown during the NFL draft. I ain't gonna comment. Uh, Galladay would give Lamar Jackson a trustworthy, big body threat who can win on, <laughs> on deep jump balls better than anyone currently on the roster. So, um, the only thing I disagree with there, trustworthy. Trustworthy. Because, again, the injuries. The injuries. That's the, 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 the biggest thing with that whole Kenny Galladay one is the injuries. So, 
That one would also be a no from me. Say, for instance, he had he dealt with a lot of injuries throughout his career, and he was making like five mil a year. I'd be willing to take that risk. Yeah, I'd be willing to take that risk. But to have all those injuries and you, the base is thirteen mil, but I, I think that is is the cap hit is my thing is like eighteen for something like this, something crazy. But I, I would be like, nah, I just I, I would not want them to do it. But anyway, I, I just so for for some of them some of them trades were, were decent now. Some of them like the, the Chuck Clark one, okay, that was decent. The Scotty Miller one, that one was decent. But the other two, the Marcus Peters, no, 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 the Marcus Peters one, no. And the Kenny Galladay, nah. And then on top of that, it'd be giving up Nick Boyle. So it's like, man, so, I mean, both teams would be like, it's like they would be swapping injured guys. Like, hey, you want our injured tight end? Hey, you want our injured receiver? Hey, it's a clean sweep, clean swap. So, it, yeah, that, that, that's a no from me. But anyway, team keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all so much. Go check out Lamar Jackson Restaurant, man. I, I promise you, you won't regret it. Uh, but just like Bleacher Report, BR Gridiron is trying to make a lot of these players when it comes to them being on their current teams. We are out.